finishing up the end of the uh, Open Dutch Hackathon uh, uh, two days or uh, uh, maybe a long day of developing for the developers and uh, I think uh, uh, maybe an hour or something uh, uh, for the jury when they've seen the, the top 10 of the, of, uh, the best ideas uh, uh, over here. Uh, jury, maybe first you can introduce yourself. Hi, Mark Zawacki with 650 Labs from Silicon Valley. Richard Pozos, uh, Innovation Manager for Kellam. Uh, Blake Cahill, Head of Digital Marketing at uh, Philips. And I start uh, with you. Um, as a jury member, what did you think of the things that people came up with? So I saw a lot of great ideas, and you have to think that these ideas are a little over 24 hours old, but in 24 hours, a tremendous amount of progress uh, on, on just a lot of fronts. Very exciting. And, you know, a company, uh, you know, next to me is... Uh, uh, a couple of great Dutch companies. They saw 50 different companies coming up with ideas in 24 hours. So what did you think? Yeah, it was, it was like you said, it was very exciting to see how far they can get in 24 hours. Um, and of course, we, we also saw differences in quality. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, but that's all part of the game. So we were not only interested in how did they design it or how, how well did they code it, but also how well did they pitch their story and how well did they... Uh, construct, let's say, this potential uh, new business model. Yeah, because I, I spoke to a lot of them, and some of them, uh, they have a really good view when they get here, because we need designers as well. So it's not only about, say, uh, coding, uh, because, of course, you only have the, the two-minute pitch to uh, well, to pitch your idea. Uh, so it seems like there's sort of a professionalization uh, in, 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 the ha in the hackathon world as well. So they get better uh, prepared. When I um, uh, ask you, when I am so... Uh, um, enthusiastic about, say, the speed uh, um, the people do this in as well. And for example, you're a, a beautiful company where you used to work, say, with finished uh, products and then a long term, etc. And now you're an ecosystem and et, and, and, and et cetera. Is that still something you get enthusiastic about as well? The speed uh, people do things in. Yeah, I mean, I think the the speed at which this these teams have created something uh, is really incredible actually in uh, basically 24 36 hours what what I found kind of very uh, powerful was the more data that's available the more interesting you can co-create something with so it starts with the data sets themselves so I think it's a good example of the more open data we bring the more useful things can be created um, but I think when we also look at the best application of that data, it, the things that clearly boil to the top and won't change for anybody is around user experience. You need to have a good user experience, I think, mm. that wraps all those data sets together. So for me, that's, that was what I found really exciting was, you know, this open data combined with user experience, the people that put that together the best sort of rose to the top. Well, how this also started is we we have a, a group of, of companies uh, that uh, in Holland that meet uh, regularly and we talk about innovation, about the cooperation between each other. And one of the topics that we had on the table was big data and everyone was talking about it. But when we when we discussed with each other how far each of these companies were, we were all struggling and how, how do we get to the next phases? So at a certain point we said, why don't we join forces? Because what we often are focused on is working together with startups because there's where 80% of the innovation takes place. But we sometimes forget that we can also still join forces between the big companies. And I think in this case it worked out great because besides the result that you have seen today, as I said already on stage, we have also put our privacy officers to, uh, together, we put our security officers next to each other, and they've learned a great deal from each other during the whole process. So it also helped these companies. And uh, we thought also the proposition by doing it together uh, made it more appealing to, to the developers. Yeah. Because they don't get the opportunity to have that many APIs uh, at the same time. Yeah, I'd just like to build an echo on that because, I mean, that's uh, the behind the scenes of all that teaming up on data and privacy and making sure we brought clean data sets from this whole consortium of people to work with was really, uh, yeah. really quite a movement and something that will last beyond this and will continue to carry forward. And uh, I think in a world in which... Uh, consumer data continues to get hacked, uh, you know, really the company's understanding privacy issues and customer data issues is so critical. And uh, it's a core tenant for us at Philips. Uh, so we're really pleased to see other companies coming around with that. This is such a unique 
format. I I don't think I've seen one quite like it anywhere in the world. The, the, the format itself is innovative. Typically, an airline looks at other airlines and saying, what's innovative? Or a consumer products company looks at other consumer product companies and says, what's innovative? Or a bank or a, a retailer. You know, in this instance, they said, where is there innovation on the edges between an airline and a retailer, between an airline, a retailer, and a bank, between a consumer products company and an airline and a bank and a retailer? Uh, I, I can't think of a... But you saw collab- you saw collaboration. You saw, you saw collabor- supply chain. You saw customer yeah. experience across improve. industries, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I've never and, seen anywhere is, in the and, world. And this is the future, right? So yeah. yeah. And so a good thing is so, so that like there's like two good things at least uh, of, of this event. So one of them is that your, your companies uh, uh, say together and and, and let's see what co- collaboration between companies means and uh, opening up your data, opening up your companies uh, to uh, external uh, uh, creativity. Correct, but so so I, I, I uh, of course we, th- that's that's what what happened, and of course we got far more out of it than only than only those things. Um, you have heard also the enthusiasm uh, enthusiasm about working together. So we already discussed in the last few months: can we also work together like this on sustainability? Can we work together like this on uh, the sharing economy? Yeah, instead of sharing between neighbors, we can also share maybe between companies. Yeah. Um, so. This this cross industry collaboration, I think, is the future, uh, and this doesn't have to be only between large companies and startups, but can also be between large companies, uh, also with with bet- uh, between uh, different industries. Well, and I think, I mean, if you think about it, data crosses the boundaries of a new the new service economy. So you're going to have to bring data sets together. We're going to have to work across. The, those blurred lines of space between, you know, very product-centric uh, kind of companies that did one thing in a service world, it all sort of blends. So uh, I think coming together more and more, that's what will create sort of new services, n- new business models for for all of us. But, but is it for you difficult uh, as a company or for all, all the companies? Because what you're uh, doing now is say say the, the the constant factor is that you don't know what's going to happen, uh, more or less. So the 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 the, the constant factor is everything changes all the time, and maybe that has been always the case. Okay. But the but speed, the speed in which it's yeah. changing now, if you don't have in the core DNA of the people at your company this mindset to be able to openly collaborate as the 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 world is is shifting. You know, you don't have, you're not going to have time in, say, 18 to 24 months to say, we need to figure out how we collaborate with, uh, with, with another company. Yeah. I mean, you need to start embedding that in the DNA of, of, of the company and the workers right now. I mean, don't, don't make any uh, mistakes or illusions. This took uh, a lot to set up, as, as Michelle was pointing to. It took six months of the legal department saying, are we okay sharing? And the privacy department saying, are we okay sharing? Uh, so to Blake's point, they've set the ground that it, actually it's okay. You, you know, it worked. They each saw 50 different ideas of their company uh, working with other industries, which is actually how consumers act, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, but but they can all go back to the legal department and say, see, it's okay. And they go back to the privacy department and say, it was okay for us to do this. And the momentum will build where the next one will be more impactful. Yeah. So, uh, so Michel, is, is it? Uh, will will there be an uh, open Dutch hackathon next year? Well, yeah, I've heard uh, a whole organization already uh, discussing what the next one should look like. So, uh, I think uh, I think for sure it will. And I have to say that um, we had now seven partners uh, working together on this hackathon, but there were many that that told us that they were interested uh, either too late in a too late stage, or uh, said, well. We would love to join next year, but this year we, we just can't make it for whatever good reason. So um, I think there's enough of enthusiasm to do something uh, even more uh, uh, creative and special next year, yeah. I would say. Uh, you said, and I agree in a sense, of, of course it's a good thing that say that uh, our, our companies in different uh, fields, but the next stage will be interesting as well, I think. Uh, will Rabobank say, okay, of course, next year we need uh, ABN AMRO and whatever mm-hmm. other bank uh, there is as well. Or uh, So uh, I think the next phase should be that, as well as the different uh, uh, fields, there should be the, the competitors. What do you think? 
Yeah, it's always going to be uh, more difficult to bring. But, I mean, it's open data sets. So, I mean, it's something you can already, you know, uh, play with today. We've made it publicly available. So I think as long as the, you know, people that are participating in the hackathon are bringing forward publicly available data, it's already there. Why not? It's already, it's they already, could, it's they already could there. already use it. They yeah. could already use it technically, right? So and, and, and maybe them pushing each other with open data benefits both of them more than the, the siloed mentality. If you look just in the last week, what Apple Play pulled together in partnerships, many, many banks competing, uh, uh, collaborating on that platform, have been trying, to do, platform, have been trying to do on their yeah. own, and it and it brought together an ecosystem. So, uh, you know, Robo Bank's not in the room right now, but but actually, Abi and Amro being here with with Robo could could make sense. Yeah. So does this event uh, help uh, you in your company say to? Uh, well, to tell the story about the power of uh, opening up open data, etc. Yes, it helps in actually many, many respects. So like I already told you, it helps uh, the communication department, the privacy officer, the security departments of IT division to learn from other companies. But it also helps, uh, let's say, to speed up because, of course, we already had the idea of organizing a hackathon, but by doing it together with others, I think it happened at least half a year or a year earlier than it, than it would have uh, happened if we would organize something ourselves, even if it's less complicated. I think it also helps to, to show that uh, what, what, what people can do in 24 hours. So we had also one of our uh, uh, IT, uh, let's say, uh, head of IT department yesterday and he was very enthusiastic. So also, yeah, seeing what what people can do in mm -hmm. a few hours. You mean they don't get their projects done in twenty four hours? They, they, they don't. Make them. <laughs> <laughs> Should send and, all IT departments to hackathons. And, 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 and what, what I really love also is, and that 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 I can use in the whole company, let's say in all layers, is how much you can do if you join forces with other parties. So the open innovation model. I mean, we've talking about this for for ages but just this, do it this one is done in practice yeah so and and, and it's for you yeah i think uh very, very similar uh from from bringing some people on on board uh that they don't really understand or as close to it but for me i think w when you can actually highlight the examples of you know the commingled data that it actually creates a new service model uh, a business model of, of how you could charge for something where maybe you're only a piece of that ecosystem that you bring into something that's being developed uh, you know if you don't bring it in your competitor will potentially. So really helping to drive this mindset that you don't have to own the whole product or maybe the whole ecosystem, but you have to make parts of your product or service available to be co-created into ecosystems in order to generate revenue. So that for, for us really showing tangible mm. examples of things mashed together, uh, really further highlight that you're not just gonna make something and stick it on a box in a shelf anymore. Mm. Um, the, later on, the, the guys are sitting uh, over there, so the winners will be the last uh, interview I will be doing here. Uh, so, um, what did you like about the winners and what did they do? Well, uh, you know, I'm an American, but I did live in uh, the Netherlands for seven years. And when I saw it, it felt real Dutch. I mean, you know, is this, this whole skippable experience with, you know, people waiting, Dutch love to travel, and they always travel all around, you find them anywhere in the world, but they love the kadojas and the kazelic thing, and it just, <laughs> I mean, the whole thing, just like, when I saw it, it was like, that's Dutch, right? I mean, you just, it, it had this feeling to it that that okay, was a can good you, solution. Can you tell so people who haven't seen it, what, what, it, what, what So what the is, winning solution yeah? is you, you gift a, a box, and it arrives on the, on the belt, so you, you know, you're, you've just arrived back from two weeks in Indonesia, and your parents or your sister or brother know you're coming and they, they order a gift box for you. And it could be groceries or it could be some other gifts. Maybe you're celebrating an anniversary or a newlywed party or a birthday, but it's a surprise. And it's celebrating your home. You know, you're coming back to the Netherlands. And uh, when shows I saw it. It shows up in your luggage. It shows up in your luggage. And when I saw it, I thought, that's so Dutch. I mean, in a good way, you know, in a good way. It's like, that is. Yeah? Yeah, I, that's. Yeah, it, it really felt, you know, culturally something that would go over well here. And, and now could you imagine you're at Skipple and you see one on the belt, you want to do that the next Very time. Viral, the viral, the viral. It's, it's a viral, viral it's, nature yeah. of it. It's quite cool. Yeah, because I saw the, 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 the thing and it was for Rose 
something, Road to Vries or whatever it was. And uh, when people have, say, have the app and they can choose between a couple of types of boxes, presets, so to say, or they could make their own selection of the things, and then you see it showing up um, on, the, uh, on the belt. But of course, you thought immediately, uh, how practical is that going to be? Of course, you're yeah. right. Yeah. That, and I, actually, I did. Yeah. He's very worried about it getting crushed between but suitcases. Can, yeah. But you can fake it on the belt. You don't. Maybe you just uh, put it on yeah. the belt as it's coming pick it around. Up somewhere, pick it up somewhere else. No, but it can be solved. And I mean, yeah. we, we have done something like this. I mean, not with boxes, but we call it, if I'm not wrong, a few years ago, Surprise Me or, or something like that. So um, where we surprised uh, travelers with gifts on the air, at the airport. And yeah, he said the Dutch like it, but actually all nationalities that we surprised really loved it. So, I mean, it's of course great to get a surprise, to get a gift. So uh, it has a, a huge like factor, let's say. And 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 they, they work it out quite well. I mean, of course, it needs some extra work, but uh, 24 hours, I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, it was, uh, I, I think <clears throat> there was the Dutch, less about the Dutch factor. I saw... I saw that in there, but I, I saw also a global template where if you built the back end of this thing right, you just lined up the right uh, bull.com and Albert Hein in Indonesia or whatever. The, yeah, like the you, d- you dev- the developed top that 50 part, airports the globally. top 50 airports locally. You've got a global network for delivering these these th- th- this this pack, um, and that actually could scale. So for me, I saw scale in it. Um, uh, that that was actually pretty good potential, actually. And they're yeah. pre-selected, right? It's yeah. an anniversary or a birthday or a and there must be a dozen categories of pre-selected sure. things or to moving back home or all kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, for example, you could choose for, for, for when you're Dutch and you come home, you could choose for the Dutch package with cheese and maybe... Or sporting it. elements. I mean, there, there's the yeah. thematics you could do on that where it's pre-selected is... And honestly, if you founded it here, you could ship it out outbound too through Schiphol, let's say, as the, if you were sending to the receiving end. So it was a surprise when you arrived on your holiday or wherever. So there's a number of combinations with the whole thing that I thought... Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it could work really well. Yeah, and one of the things you had to judge on was the amount of uh, APIs people uh, use. So, uh, did they have a, a, l- a large amount of them? They had one. Some had a large three. amount in theory, <laughs> yeah. and some technical people kind of pulled them back, and then there were four. Yeah, three or four. I think the winner had four. I think they were either three or four. They definitely had the... Uh, Albert Hein, I'm Schiphol, sure. Albert Hein, Schiphol, 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 and they had my, my order as well. Might they, have, they might have had five. We're paying, I think. Well, no, I, I, paying. Think, I think they had something like three working, according to... Uh, uh, let me see. We can't double count Ball four, and Albert four, Hein. Four. So, four. yeah, so Albert four. Hein, yeah. Four, they had four. Four working uh, APIs, let's say. Yeah, and you have seen a lot of other people that's, that mentioned an, an amount of APIs that didn't always work, or is that... Well... To be honest, I'm not an expert, so uh, uh, that's why beforehand I made sure that someone is, uh, is checking everything and, and also joining all the sub-juries and walking around and seeing what people are doing. So to have some kind of reliability on, on uh, the d- does this technically work, this app, and did they really use seven, five or four apps and, and do they really all work or are they just mentioned on a on a piece of paper yeah. and actually not not being used yeah some of the um, uh, the ideas people don't even um, need say the, the company that uh, is involved because they could just do it i think in this case of course they need some of the because you can't have yeah. your uh, package on, well, the, on well, the belt well we we we, we uh, well so i i work for for france KLM for the airline and we work a lot with startups uh, we also invest in startups and uh, it is always a combination. We need them for their creative idea, and for their for the solution that they, that, that that they have thought of. And they often need us. Uh, could be for having a launching customer. Could be someone to uh, for testing ground. I mean, this product you probably need to test. Maybe they need another kind of box, but this box needs to be tested because if the first three gifts break, I mean, <laughs> you have th- no th- there goes your <laughs> your model. Um, th- they also often need some maybe some coaching on. How do you make this business model work, or uh, how do you pitch your story to other airlines, or can you can you introduce it at, at other airports, or other? I mean, that's the network that that these big companies then have is are also useful. It's always a win-win it's a partnership. Uh, partnership. Sure. Yeah. So, um, are, are you going to talk to them uh, afterwards next week or the week after, or? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I mean, all the. I mean, like I said on stage. Um, 
there were also sub juries so all the sub juries from each of these companies looked well at all the 50 participating teams and have selected which ones they thought were were interested interesting for them to continue the the discussion so even the ones that didn't win um, there will a lot of them will be invited by these companies and uh, to present it's to, yeah, to present and maybe continue working on their idea so they didn't use the light uh, there was a number of uh, the hue yeah. integrations uh, you know I think um, you know from from a Philips perspective we have another we have a number of other things we would have liked to have brought but working through some of the, the privacy uh, and legal issues around health and wellness data etc um, in, in this period of time but uh, it wasn't exactly feasible but you know I could just I could see a day when we had data data around health and wellness connected to Albert Hein food consumption data that, that could be very, very yeah. interesting. So for us, uh, I think we saw some interesting uses of the, the hue, which signal when mm. a transaction's yeah. happened, et cetera, yeah. um, mm. which is very, very interesting. But uh, I, I think that there could be even more interesting things that, that Philips will bring to the next hackathon, I think. Yeah, for example, I think one of them was for the sort of the children's banking, the yeah. pixel bank it was uh, called, so the children could see if there was something happening on their bank account. Other guys were having something where uh, it was about healthy food sure. and when you open your the fridge, fridge it was and, uh, when it's green <laughs> it has healthy yeah, food I think there was there. a lot of I think there was a lot of really uh, clever tie-ins to how the main concept could then also be highlighted by light um, to express whether it was good bad or different we even had one when you uh, were uh, it didn't make it all the way through but if you won uh, you you bid on this trip uh, and you and you won the trip. Uh, the you your lights in the house turned to the color of the country. So if you won your trip to Italy, your, all the lights in your house went green, white, and green, white, and red. Uh, so there's lots of clever ways you can use light. Uh, so um, hopefully we see it more and more integrated. Okay, last question. So should more uh, companies like the companies involved uh, here uh, do this sort of thing? I would. Uh you know, as Michelle said, they organized seven corporate sponsors. It, it, it feels like it could go to 11 or 12 next year, and everyone's comfortable, and, and you know, it's you have more companies, so, so you have more open data to work with, so the corporates benefit. You'll attract more uh, entrepreneurs and, and, and startups to come in. I, I think it could realistically scale next year to 11 or 12 corporates, and I think it'd be a good thing for the for the process overall. Yeah, Misa, you already said that you're really enthusiastic about it. So uh, if if it's up to you, uh, uh, next year you'll be you'll be uh, here again. So if there is one thing you as a company or you as a person working for a large company uh, learned of, or, or uh, come back uh, with uh, uh, at home, uh, what what is it? Um, well. Like I said, uh, for me, the, the the big thing is that if we join forces as uh, as, as big companies, we can uh, we can achieve a lot not only towards the outside world but also inside our own companies. Being able to leverage, for me, being able to say I'm doing we are doing this together with six other huge Dutch companies, big names, uh, uh, creates also kind of stimulus for the company. So that was for me. Um, yeah, uh, maybe as expected, but uh, I, l I love to see the, that also being the outcome. Yeah, earlier on when I talked to colleagues of yours, I, um, uh, <coughs> your, um, well, you, you more or less say, say evolve from a company making sort of fixed products yeah. in, the, in the company that's where mm -hmm. the ecosystem and the connectedness uh, is, is, is uh, really Im important. So when you're uh, busy in the in say in the digital this sort of digital world is maybe more of a sort of more natural thing maybe that also, is that the case or what has it been difficult for your no I mean I well? think each of the a lot of the product teams have been on uh, big evolutions to go from analog I'll call it box products into more of service models and they a lot of the product teams actually have had a lot of individual hackathons. I think what's very interesting about a concept like this, bringing more of them into this type of situation is combining outside data sources. Uh, you can hack your own pro 
product to death. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, unless you bring in an outer sphere of influence to, to combo with it, I don't think you end up in a, a, such a different place. So um, I think bringing more uh, of our product teams and, and different data sets uh, could make it much richer. Um, and, and I would say for next year, a place to challenge the, the, the organization is, what about government? Um, because we saw a number of solutions that sort of, uh, I think, tried to lean towards CSR and, and we, social good. We, we, we did exactly yeah. actually talk to the police. Yeah. The police wanted to join, yeah. but at the end they couldn't make it. But they said, uh, if you do something next year, we, yeah. we certainly want to be part of it. So I think if we think of themes, B2B, B2C, and then I'll call it social social good or, or CSR. I think when you think about categories and the, the partners you bring in, I think there's a lot we can continue to do to evolve the platform. Okay, thank you very much, and hopefully uh, see you next year. Great. Thanks thank a lot. you for having us. Bye.